Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Tuesday, December 14th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Real quick before I get started, I do want to personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering later on in this week. So if you're liking what you see as I go through the video and you want to learn more about this tool and how it can be used to build consistency as a trader, then definitely get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box you can click on. If you're watching at my site, there's an area right there on the page that you can click on to get signed up. So just keep that in mind. And if you're liking what you see, then definitely get signed up for this free class. Now, before I get into the charts, just a couple quick clarification points. First off, I'll be doing the 30 minute time frame. So if you're new to trading and technical analysis, what I mean by that is each one of these candlesticks as they're called represents 30 minutes worth of time. And next, the market is still gonna be open for a while. So you're not crazy, that candle right there that you'll see is still moving. And I like to do this sometimes, we can capture some really interesting action live as it's playing out. Uh, but the, the, you know, the day is almost over. So it's close enough to where you know the levels I talked about are still gonna be relevant here for Tuesday. So first one here, ticker symbol BFRI. This one should mean more to those of you that watched your videos from last week, uh, because I talked about that red line right there as resistance at 650. I mean, just a classic technical breakout broke that level. Took a while to get, you know, kind of some, you know, establishment above it, but when it did, late afternoon made a big surge above there. So congratulations to those of you that played that breakout. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that line there. It served its purpose for now. But the first update that needs to come in play, and this is just based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, you want to see them act as support. So one of the newest areas of support, if there is any sort of pullback moving forward, going to be down there at the 650 mark. And 650 is also a level where, I mean, and I'm not saying this will occur, but even if the price did come down there and then kind of level out, I mean, from a broader standpoint, what would you still have? Well, you'd still have a set of those there and there and there and down there. And if you envision each of those as stair steps, big picture wise, you would still very clearly have an overall uptrend. So in other words, assuming you care about the grand scheme of things, you could still you know, sit through a pretty big pullback and the chart could still remain perfectly bullish, but that is perspective. If you're a day trader and you bought right there and your plan was to buy and sell within you know, seven minutes, well then from that angle, yeah, the chart's looking pretty, pretty shaky right now for you. But assuming you care about the big picture of things, uh, the trend continues as far as next levels of resistance and battleground areas, pretty straightforward whenever the price got right up here around that 825 mark, uh, you know, the momentum seemed to just disappear. So that'll be the main level to watch moving forward. But all in all, very nice way to start off the week. Next one here, BLU. And I like this one for one simple reason. Well, more than that, I suppose. I mean, it had a big gap up, had good solid volume today. But the main reason is just because the, of the ability to draw that right there, that tread line right there, which by no means is some sort of great skill on my part. So I'm not trying to imply that. In fact, the exact opposite. I assure you a lot of people have drawn that tread line. And I you know, say that because when a lot of people have drawn the same things, are watching the same things, are wondering the same things, call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can produce some very dynamic movement. So am I saying that any of this is guaranteed? Of course not, guarantees don't exist. But is it plausible, is it logical to think that if the price could recover back up to that tread line and get the break up through with it, that break right there could produce quite a bit of upside buying pressure and momentum. It absolutely is because you know, like I said, a bunch of people have drawn that trend line. So if the price can return back up there and get the break up through it, uh, it could definitely be a very interesting situation. And even just from a volume analysis standpoint, while the price has pulled back here, you can see the volume has also gotten very low. And that's exactly what you want to see during pullbacks, consolidations. You want to see volume drop off and that's what's happened here. So keep an eye on that trend line if you like to play breakouts and we'll see if any sort of self-fulfilling prophecies happen or not later on in the week. Next one here, AMC, and the, you know, it's just the bloodshed continues. There's really no other way of putting it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that line right there and make our first update. And this update just based on a foundational rule, as I've said, that when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. And you can see that's already played out here. So going into the day, that 2415-ish area was that level of support. But as soon as it was broken right there, you can see rejected the price, rejected the price, rejected the price. So there is a small little bounce right now going on, uh, but I'd be very skeptical of it uh, because you know the price is still even down below that level. And then for more of the overarching standpoint, which I've you know, talked about, I want to continue to just watch this trend line moving forward. So I'll continue to move it forward. Is going to be that trend line right there. Uh, but as of now, that trend line is pretty irrelevant because I mean, before that you know trend line should even be discussed or talked about any further, the price first needs to prove itself by, need, by being able to get up above 24.15. So keep an eye on that as that initial area of resistance. And then as far as levels of support are concerned, pretty straightforward. Like I said earlier, the price has started to bounce here a little bit. So now it's just a question of, okay, well, can it at least keep bouncing? Not even in, in a big way, but just a little bit. And I, I realize these are just all words, bounce a little bit. So what does all that mean? Well, this is the great power of charts. They allow you to take words 
and then make them very visual. So when I say keep bouncing, it's just gotta bounce a little bit, just stay above that green trend line. Cause if the price breaks through there, that implies that this current bounce has now you know been broken down through. And that would be, you know again, not a guarantee, but a, a plausible thought to have of, okay, well maybe this thing is headed down to new lows down below that 2250 area. So these will be the main areas to keep watching moving forward. Next one here, AAPL and a pretty straightforward chart, but not really at the same time because Hey Clay, is this a good or bad looking chart? Well, I don't know, what was your strategy going on? I've kind of alluded to this in a, a previous chart, but if you're a day trader and you're buying up here, trying to play some sort of momentum, well then from that angle, the, the, the chart's looking really, really bad because yeah, that, that's a pretty big pullback that you just got, that you pretty much bought the high of and now the price is dropping against you quite a bit. However, if you care about more than just one day, if you care about more of the macro standpoint, then everything is still perfectly fine. I get it, it can feel bad when things gap up and then the gap up completely fails. But like I said, taking a step back, everything is fine from, from really any angle. If you wanna use moving averages, price is still nicely above that purple line there, the 50 period moving average. If you wanna look at lows, okay, well there's lows right there. Compare those lows, those lows, those lows, those lows. And again, you go back to the whole stair steps, you can very clearly see stair steps still progressing in the upwards direction. So really any way you look at it, assuming again, you're not looking at it from a day trader standpoint that bought right there, the overall chart is still perfectly fine, but there is a pullback now, right? So if you're somebody that's worrying about, I don't know, am I chasing, am I suffering from FOMO, you know, you know, fear of missing out? Well, yeah, maybe those people were because they, they bought the top. But if you like to find trends and then find pullbacks within their tr in those trends, uh, you know, Apple fits that category. Uh, very closely there. So like I said, if you like those sorts of setups, then I'd keep Apple on the watch list. Next one, PTPI, and talked about this one previously. That's where this red line here is coming from, which was you know a level of resistance I talked about right at 335. Uh, but like BFRI this morning, a nice gap up, broke through there, and you can see the rest is history. So in technical jargon, a nice technical breakout here, which brings about that update, which you now know when levels of resistance are broken and closed above you wanna see them act as support. So $3.35, now one of the newest areas of support moving forward. So if you do like to play pull pullbacks, uh, then that could be an area that you uh, would watch. As far as areas of resistance, what I'm very curious about here is gonna be this tread line right here, which is starting to pr present some problems and it's kind of a cruel one. What do I mean by cruel? Right there, you can see the, the, the tread line actually let the price get through and then pulled a, hey, just kidding, and then back down the price went. So moving forward, I'd watch that tread line very closely. And you know, history has now taught us a lesson that just because the price gets above that tread line, you might wanna still be a tad bit skeptical uh, because as it shows right there, just getting above it, not gonna quite be enough. So you're gonna wanna make sure the price can not only get, get above that breakout point, but actually then be able to start to stay above it. So you know, keep an eye on that dynamic right there. Uh, so yeah, unfortunate for the people uh, that didn't really know that existed and they were buying that breakout. But if you didn't, well, now you know, know, now you know uh, that there are apparently some tricksters in this one and they like to do the whole fake breakout thing. Uh, so just keep an eye on that dynamic. Uh, but again, if you like pullbacks in 335 is an interesting level. But from a macro point of view, very, very impressive move. Like I said, you got the breakout there. It's much higher than where it was, especially after the pullback on Friday. So let's see if this is a start to a much bigger trend for the week. Next one here, NES, and this one is definitely looking ugly, uh, but for you longer time viewers, as you've heard me say, sometimes there can be opportunity in ugly, um, and that's what we have here. So if you like to play these sorts of situations, uh, then this one should be right on your watch list. But yeah, clearly this one gapped up, made a huge, very nice move. And now you can see, and as I speak, you know, this pullback continues as that candle is, you know, trying to push down to even uh, lower lows here. But the question to me just becomes, you know, can the price push down to that general area around $1.75, which is interesting because you have two very well-known moving averages. You have that purple line there, which I've already mentioned, the 50 period. And then you have that pink line there, which is the 200 period moving average. Both very, very well-known, very, very followed. So there is that attribute of self-fulfilling prophecy with it, where if the price gets down to that area, Again, does that mean that the price is going to for sure bounce? Absolutely not. But does that, is it a plausible, is it a logical, uh, you know, thought to have, a, you know, I think it could come down here, maybe consolidate out and then, you know, turn itself back around. Yeah, that, that's more than plausible. And assuming you can honor risk and have risk control systems, you know, within your strategy, well, then from a risk versus reward standpoint, it could set up very nicely, meaning maybe it just keeps going down. Oh, well, you, you, you take the small loss, but if it does decide to turn around, then you could look, be looking at a much bigger, you know, win compared to what was being risked. So like I said, if you like to play these ugly charts that you think, uh, you know, might turn back into being good looking charts, uh, then yeah, this thing was really good looking. Now it's looking ugly, but let's see if it can get a tad bit uglier and then see how it goes from there. Next one here, LCID. And uh, this will mean more to those of you that watched a previous video, but I talked about this level right here at 36.75 on Friday. And I mean, the power of charts, you just can't make this stuff up. Big pullback this morning, <clears throat> excuse me. 
And you can see right there, I mean, bounce beautifully off that level. So uh, a good sign, not only from a trading standpoint, but the price is still showing signs of progress because by staying above that level and bouncing off that, well, now you have a low there, you have that low there, and you do still have stair steps per, you know, progressing in the upwards direction. And that's what you want. If this thing is going to ultimately reverse around, you just want the price to keep showing signs of progress. And again, as of right now, that quote unquote sign of progress is being able to stay above 36.75, which again is right where it bounced from today. As far as areas of resistance, again, this will mean more to those of you that watch the past videos, but I've talked about that purple line right there. And wouldn't you know it, surprise, surprise, that's the area right there where the price is currently uh, you know, having some problems. Doesn't mean that the price can't get through there, uh, but it just makes sense on why the price is stumbling around that area. So moving forward, right around that 39.75 mark, the current value of that 50 period moving average is gonna be the main level of resistance. But all in all, from a, from a bigger picture point of view, progress is being shown. That's great, that's what you want. As long as those higher lows are being put into place, that's what matters most. Next one here, TNXP. For those of you that like to play uh, the, the penny stock range and, you know, very clearly, big, very nice move upwards here. Uh, kind of a crazy day. It started with a move up, acted like it was game over, and then kaboom, back up it went. Um, so if, if this is the start of something bigger to the upside, then figured at least get it mapped out here to keep an eye on it for, like I said, those of you that like to play this range. Next big battleground here. It's going to be right up there at 45 cents for a couple reasons. First off, you can see there is already some history of that area uh, behaving uh, in a very stubborn way towards the bulls. And then secondary, you have that pink line up there, which is kind of a coincidence, I suppose, where you also have that value, you know, valued right now at 45. So it's kind of like a double whammy. Not saying that 45 cents can't be broken. Just saying that if this, you know, momentum move does continue up to that area, uh, you know, it's a pretty big question mark right now of whether or not uh, the price will actually have enough power and momentum to get through it. But if it does get through it, well, that would just be a signal that, you know, the, this current bounce right now uh, is not only staying strong, but it's picking up that much more strength. So keep an eye on that from a resistance side of things. As far as supports are concerned, key level to watch right now is gonna be right there at the 40 and a half cent mark. So if there are any sort of pullbacks, 40 and a half cents is pretty important because the last thing you would wanna see the price do is to come down here and then break down through it because what would you have at that point? Well, at that point, you'd have the price having gone right back to where it was. And I mean, not to insult your intelligence, but price movements that go back to where they were, not exactly a sign of true power. So keep your eye on these dynamics moving forward and let's see how Tuesday plays out. Next one here, FH. TX and pretty crazy mover, but what's now making this very interesting is this afternoon. Price has come back to life, and this is why I like to do these videos while the market's still open, because it's trying to break out right now as I record this. So maybe we'll see a break of 18, because that would be a first kind of significant area, and it's knocking on 18 right now. Uh, but if 18 can be broken, then the next key level to watch very closely is going to be right up there at 1850, and it's more so a resistance zone up around here, because you have 1850. And then you have the $19 mark. So basically a 50 cent resistance zone where if these levels can be cleared, uh, like I was just saying on the previous stock, not only would that be a sign that this move right now is staying strong, but it's just getting that much stronger. So keep an eye on that dynamic moving forward. You know, that's really the big question is, you know, th this checkbox has already been accomplished. It's starting to recover and recover very nicely. So the next checkbox is just now, can the price get up through that resistance zone? So keep an eye on that dynamic. If there are any sort of pullbacks, well then, and there, look there, there we go. There is the break of 18. So that's why I like to do these when the market's still open. Sometimes we can capture this. So who knows? If I stall long enough, maybe we can get up there and capture, uh, see how it does with this resistance zone. But I'm gonna keep us moving here. Uh, but you'll, you'll know, you'll, by the time this you're watching this, you already have this information. Did the price ultimately get up through that area? You already know at this point, uh, you know, by the time it gets uploaded and all that. But as far as pullback areas are concerned, keep an eye on 1525. But yeah, definitely that main dynamic here is can the price push up through, through that resistance zone? We'll see what happens. Next one here, TSLA Tesla. And as I've done in the past, I like to trade this one. In fact, this is the only one that I traded today. So uh, I, I'm doing this, yeah, so you can see, but I, I'm definitely doing it more so for, for me in the sense of, you know, what levels would I most care about headed into Tuesday? Um, so you can take or leave these levels if you don't agree with them. Hey, that, that's perfectly fine. But these are the levels, like I said, that I'll be watching. So the first level is just based on that principle that I've talked about when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. So if there is any sort of continued bounce, because yeah, Tesla is going through a little bit of a bounce here. But if that bounce does continue, uh, that first key level is going to be right up there at 985, which again, classic example, price broke through it, tried to bounce back above it, and that's right where it got rejected from. So 985 is going to be a key level of resistance to keep an eye on along that purple line up there, 50 pair and moving average, but that's kind of irrelevant right now until the price can at least get up through 985. But the level that I'm very, very, very curious about, because you know that there's been all sorts of people that have drawn this exact same line, is right there at 950. In fact, let me change that to green to represent support. But you can see that the last time the price was down around that area, very impressive bounce. Once again, the price is held at that area. So the shorts are definitely gonna be wondering, you know, if the price comes back down there and can break down through it, 
Once more, no guarantees, but is that plausible to think that that could create just another wave of downside selling pressure? It absolutely is. But it's also more than valid to think, well, I mean, it's bounced very nicely off that area before. Maybe this is the start of another big bounce. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, but like I said, I'm not convinced of that at all until the price can at least get up to 985 and push above there. But those are definitely going to be the two main technical levels that I'll be watching on Tuesday. So that wraps up the top 10. Again, if you like what you saw and you wanna learn more about this tool and how it can be used to build consistency as a trader, then definitely get signed up for the free class. It'll be, like I said, this Thursday, December 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So definitely go get signed up for it. If you enjoy these top 10 videos, then please communicate that to me by doing two easy things. Hit the like button, leave a simple comment below. Tell me that what you traded today or what you're watching for tomorrow. Give me a thumbs up emoji, say hi. But those two things, hitting the like button, leaving a simple comment, communicate to me that it's worth the time and effort for me to do these videos. And as long as I know that it's worth my time and effort, then hey, I have no problem doing them at all. So I appreciate your communication in that regard. Hit that like button, leave a simple comment. And again, if you wanna learn more about this tool and how it can be used to build consistency as a trader, then definitely get signed up for the free class. Everybody take care. Hopefully you all got off to a great start to the week.